Hello, everyone. Today, we are talking about money and self-worth. If you are someone who knows you want more financial abundance in your life, but you have a lot of trouble either drawing strong boundaries around money or talking about money or asking for money or increasing your prices, or maybe you just know you feel a general sense of unworthiness with money, then this video is for you. Today, I'm going to talk with you about where the sense of unworthiness came from and how you can begin to step into your financial power today. If you guys don't know me, my name is Whitney. I am a money mindset coach and certified financial planner. I work with service-driven entrepreneurs to help them earn more money and build wealth. Today, we're going to be talking about money and self-worth. So if this is something that you want to work on, come join me. All right, let's begin by looking at this beautiful picture chart that I've made for you because I want to start to explore where your sense of worthiness or self-worth with money comes from. Because the first thing that I want to teach you is that you were not born feeling unworthy of money. It's something that you were modeled or shown or taught along the way. So as children and as adults as well, but as children, we are pure and innocent and worthy and in our full deserving energy in the world. And this innately is what lives and exists within each of us. But we have to learn to go back to this state. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. The first thing that I want to show you, though, is what stands in between you and that full worthiness and that full deservingness. And that is life. Like that is what you've been taught about money along the way. So whether you've been taught from your religious background, there's a lot of belief that within the church that you are greedy if you want money or that money is evil or the programming that we've learned from the me- the media. So patriarchy, what we're taught in terms of even gender norms with money. Men are supposed to be the earners, although this is changing. Women are supposed to be less aggressive with money and non-binary individuals aren't even represented in our culture with money. There's also the family programming that you've had. So I want you to consider your parents' relationship with money. And I want you to ask yourself if there's any shame that you have learned from your parents and their specific financial situations. So maybe you had, uh, you lived in a two-parent household where your mother was financially dependent on your father or vice versa. I want you to start to look at what their relationships with money were and how it started to influence the way that you think about money and the way that you interact with your money. And the reason why this is so important is because all of these early childhood experiences created our current financial, like our money orientation today, our money energy today. And this is the level of worthiness and deservingness that we feel around our money today. And I like to say that A lot of us are just walking around with a big bag of money repellent that we've never actually really looked in. And so we don't have any real clarity around it, but we're walking around holding this bag, expecting us to be able to create more money when we're holding this big bag of money repellent. And this is important to identify because consciously you may believe that you want more money in your life. But unconsciously, if you're running the scripts that you learned from a young age in the background, then these are the areas that you manifest and create money from, that unconscious programming. So in order for us to start to shift into the worthiness with money, we have to bring the unconscious to the conscious. And we do that through exploration. When we are children, we, our brains are not developed enough to be able to really understand the gray area, right? Everything that we learn is either presented to us through the context of being right or wrong or good or bad, but we're not able to explore the nuance. We're not able to really question the assumptions that we learned from our church, from our family, from our, from the media, from our peers, we don't, we're not able to do that. So it is our job as adults for us to do that today, to get back to this unblocked energy state, to exist in our full worthiness and our full empowerment with money. But it begins with looking number one at the programming that we've received because 
the way that we think about our money, the way that we think about abundance, the way that we think about spending, all of that drives our feelings. All of that drives the way that we feel. The way that we think about money creates the way that we feel about money. And the way that you feel creates every single action that you take in your life. So I want you to consider what you do when you feel ashamed, what you do when you feel afraid, what you do when you feel confident. It is very different actions that you take depending upon the way that you're currently feeling. And the way that you're currently feeling is created by the way that you think about money, the way that you think about wealth, the way that you think about your worthiness. So we want to just get really clear on what that thinking is so we can start to look at the actions you're taking and the results that you're creating. Because once we can start to transform this, you'll begin to feel differently, take different actions, and ultimately create different results. So I'm going to ask you three questions here about your experience with money. And I want you to start to see what comes up for you. The first thing I want to ask you is, what do you believe you deserve with money? This is a really great question to start to explore your sense of worthiness. What do you believe that you deserve? Do you think that you deserve to have everything that you want, that you deserve to travel, that you deserve to have a nice car, that you deserve to live in a nice house? What do you believe that you deserve? The next thing I want to ask you is what do you think about money? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's evil? Do you think it's stressful? Do you think that it's fun? Do you think that it's freedom? Like, what is it that you think about money? The next question I want to ask you is, do you want to be rich? And this may be a triggering question for some of you, because I know this word rich, this is a trigger word. This is like a small word with big connotation. It can bring up big feelings for us because a lot of us believe that rich people are bad. One of the things I want to say here is that I want you to consider that what the amount of money that you do or don't have has nothing to do with who you are and your morality as a person. So there are rich people out there who are incredibly generous, awake, in touch people who exist within our society. There are also rich people out there who are greedy and who are selfish and put their own personal agenda above the agenda of someone else's. So we just want to get really curious, like why we automatically mean, make rich mean that it's the person that does all the bad things with money, right? What if it's not? What if you can be rich and generous and altruistic and spiritual? Would you want to be rich then? So it's some of this inquiry, some of this exploration that we want to start to look into to to discover what is this thinking around money that's creating your actions and results so we can start to transform that, so we can start to shift that. And so we can start to step into more worthiness with money. And I want to teach you four steps to access your financial worth. The first thing I want you to do is to identify your stories and beliefs. And remember, these are cycling within your subconscious. So we're going to have to intentionally start to dig around, look at your parents' relationship with money, all of the things that I mentioned before. And one thing I also want to point out to you is you are not your thinking. You are not your feelings. You are completely separate from those things. This is a key distinction that I want you to make as it relates to money Because oftentimes, if we believe that we are our thinking, then it's very hard to separate ourselves, our true essence, our true worthiness from the thinking that we have been taught, right? The programming that we have absorbed through our culture and our family. So you are not your thinking. You are 100% worthy. You are 100% in your essence. And we just need to get you back to that place. We need to unblock you. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to show your brain what's possible. So after you start to look at some of these beliefs, I want you to consciously show your brain that there are wealthy people out there that are living according to the values you aspire to. 
go find them. These are called wealth expanders. And we want to show your brain it is possible to expand beyond what I currently saw in my life growing up. The next thing I want you to do is actually make the decision that you are going to expand beyond what was modeled to you as a child. And this is going to require that you practice embodying worth and empowerment. Okay. So you, if we look at this thought model, this is really you putting worthy into this feeling line and asking yourself, what do I need to think about myself to believe that I'm worthy of money? And then start to really like try it on. Like I am a hundred percent worthy of wealth. And how does that make me feel? That makes me feel confident, right? So we want you to decide that you're going to expand beyond what was taught to you, which is going to require that you take those actions that you feel really uncomfortable taking. But once you start to take the actions and you see those new results, you will start to shift in your beliefs and your sense of worthiness. The last step to access your financial worth is to take steps one through three and then actually start participating in the energy exchange of money. So money is an exchange of energy. What this means is that in order to receive money, you must give. And when you are living in scarcity, when you are living in lack, you are not believing that you are worthy of giving, right? So it's like, if you believe that you don't have anything to give, then what will happen is you will not receive. So in order to receive more money, we want you to, to give. And in order to give, there's that sense of worth and empowerment that we want you to feel so you can create, so you can participate in this energetic exchange. And this process is what will help you start to make new decisions with money, to start to practice new feelings with money. But it is a conscious practice that we want to like intentionally execute in our lives, not just wait for it to happen because it won't. So to recap, we want to become aware of our current stories. We want to show our brain that what we believe is possible, like what we saw is not actually what's possible. Here's a lot of other possibilities for us. The next thing that we want to do is use our prefrontal cortex to make a decision to expand beyond what we were modeled. And we're going to practice embodying our worth and empowerment. An extra, a visualization I love to do is I like to picture myself receiving the amount of money that I want. And I like to think like what I'm doing, how I'm participating in the energy exchange, like what am I offering and how am I receiving that money back from either my clients or my tax return, like whatever it may be. And then the next thing that we're going to do is actually like get into action and participate in the energy exchange with money. So I hope this video helps you start to question some of those thought processes that you've had with money, some of the self-worth issues that you've had with money. Because one of the things that I think the main takeaway, if you get anything out of this video, is I want you to know that at your core, you are 100% worthy and deserving of everything that you want in your life. We just need to figure out what's standing in between you and that thing. And then you will start to create and manifest the financial reality that you actually want. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. If you like this video, please like, comment, and share with someone else who could benefit from this inquiry with money. Sending you all so much love.